Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from exudeautomation.com and welcome to part 11 of our understanding docker for windows video series. And in this video we'll be talking about process isolation. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 10 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Process isolation. Every operating system kernel has process trees. Even Linux and Windows has their own process trees and Linux kernel maintains a single process tree while it boots for the first time and every time new process being spawned there will be a parent child relationship between those processes and it's pretty much close in Windows as well. That's how the processes are being created in our Windows and Linux operating systems. So using process isolation it becomes possible to have multiple nested process trees each process trees can have an entirely isolated set of processes. This can ensure the processes belonging to one process tree cannot inspect or kill, in fact cannot even know of the existence of the processes in other siblings or parent process tree. And that's what is this process isolation come into picture. Because what if I get access to the main process and if I try to kill that particular main process, your whole system will go down. But in the container environment, because of the process isolation, even if you try to kill your main process, it's going to kill the main process of that particular container. It's not going to close or end the session of the host process. It's never going to happen. That's how the isolation of process comes into picture. So we are going to see this more in action rather theoretically. So let's quickly flip into our Windows Server 2016 for complete understanding of how these process isolations are really happening behind the scene in our Windows container. So for that, I'm going to flip to Windows Server 2016. So for understanding how the process is actually isolated for each and every container, what I'm going to do is, let's see what we did in our previous video, which is nothing but the part 9. I guess we just did a... Alright, so this is a container which is already running. I guess I did not close it yet. And if I go to the disk management, I can see that particular disk is still there. Right? And now, let me see this. If I want to see a process being spawned for this particular container, let me go to the task manager, if I have opened one. No, I don't have. So I'm going to open the task manager over here. Let's go to the details of the task manager and let's right click in here and select the select columns option and here there is something called as job object id right so this is exactly something like the process id in linux which is nothing but the pid and here in our windows it's something called as job id job object id so i'm going to select that i'm going to hit ok and you can see there is something called as job object id here right let me sort it this you can see that this job, these all these particular services that are running right now has got no job object ID itself. But here, there is a job object ID, right? So if I close this particular session, maybe you'll understand what I'm really talking about. Let me just exit out of this container. All right, so now I came to my actual host machine. And if I go here, you can see the disk is missing. And now if I go to this particular job object ID of the task manager, you can see that most of the job object ID is missing. Only the Google updater.exe is running, which is nothing but my own host machine's process. And there is a search UI. These are some of the job object ID of my host machine. But if I spawn a new container, let me just put this side by side in here. Okay and I'm gonna put this guy here alright so now if I try to hit enter you can see that the job of the ID has been created 352 for this particular container so you can see these are the different processes being running for that particular container right you can see the 352 here and let's do this uh, since this is a PowerShell command I can just run a PowerShell get process all right, there we go. Now you can see that there is a process being listed in here, right? And you can see there is a CEXE, CMD. So there's CMD command or something, but this one, see? 
it is not from this particular username that's why there is no system or network or local service something like that it's actually coming from the container and there are different kinds of processes being executed and all these processes are listed listed in here for that particular container so every container that you create is going to have a separate object id and those job object id is nothing to do with your host uh, job object id so even if you close this particular command.exe in here something like this it's going to quit this particular container it's not going to kill any of your service from your host machine and that's the level of isolation being created for the container as well as the host machine and that's what is called as the process isolation this is really really great because using this you can enhance the security and you can see how the level of isolation is being provided between each and every containers as compared to running all the process into a single host machine so even though they are sharing the same kernel here job object id or the process id is completely isolated for each and every container as well as the host kernel right so this is what is called as process isolation guys as more like our file system isolation so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day